he who holds the Book of Sight, when the moon is drained of all its light, will then be the ruler of the night, master of the dark. Or in this case, mistress. It's time for some unpleasant dreams because we just watched Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and My Heart's on Fire on B Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Vampiria! <laughs> we sound like a bunch of thrilled lunatics. <laughs> Welcome to B Movie Mania, everyone. I am your host this time around, Jason Hulls. Right next to me here is Chris Vira, Hacker of the Dark. But the ladies back home call me Longhorn. <laughs> you had that ready. <laughs> <laughs> Only partially. I appreciate the preparation. Mike Hayes. So, how about a blowjob? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later. And Paul Brooks. Giddy up, mm bop, mm bop, mow, mow. Giddy up, mm bop, mm bop, mow, mow. God damn it, Paul. Oh. Uh, Paul, why don't you tell us the synopsis to Elvira, Mistress of the Dark? Okay. Um, I have IMDb. I have the IMDb app, but I have uh, planes, trains, and automobiles pulled up. So one second. Well, there's a good reason for it, if you think about it. Upon arriving in a small town where she has inherited a rundown mansion, a famous horror hostess battles an evil uncle and townspeople who want her burned at the stake. A little bit of a spoiler there, geez. I'm sure you guys discovered in uh, your extensive research on this movie that there is a ton of trivia on Elvira herself. Cassandra hmm. Peterson? And Yes, Cassandra Peterson. Yeah. There is a ton. See, um, which I didn't recognize Cassandra Peterson until I saw that, or Elvira for that matter, until I saw that uh, she w also played the biker mama from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Isn't that crazy? I never Whoa. knew that when I was younger. And, and then I knew exactly who she was. Yeah, she's the, why don't you leave him to me? <laughs> I gotta go back and watch some Pee Wee. It doesn't look like her at all. <laughs> no. Huh. Yeah, she got, her, wild. she got her start in film from Frederico freaking Fellini. <laughs> yeah, really? Yep. She was she the dated. She dated Elvis, dude. <laughs> yeah, she was the lead singer in multiple Italian rock bands in the early 70s. <laughs> like she's had a fucking life, man. Yeah, it's it's wild. Like it, I and in fact, talking about the Fellini thing, like from what I saw, she dated Elvis he said that she should get into singing more, right? Which I think then she got more involved in that. And then she ended up going to Italy with these bands and then ended up working with Fellini. Like she, yeah, she's had just a crazy life. She was a go-go dancer at some point. I mean, there's that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, young too, right? right? Yeah. Like, really yeah. Young. yeah. Like 15 and, or uh, 17 or something. Yeah. Paul, did you see the thing about Tom Waits? No, I, I honestly... Uh, didn't do a ton of I, – I looked up a couple things, but I didn't do a ton of research on this. Okay. Well, evidently, the legend has it that she is the go-go dancer on Tom Waits' album cover for Small Change. Oh, I have that here. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can put a picture, you know, in the, on the site and everything. But she uh, doesn't dispute it, but she said she doesn't remember doing it. And no one else has ever stepped forward to say that it was them. Interesting. So mm -hmm. conventional thinking is that it is her. She just doesn't remember doing it. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. So there is there is a lot of stuff you can you can find on Elvira if you look. She's a cool um, lady. This film didn't do very well when it came out. It was only in theaters for two weeks. Um, part right. of the problem being that New World Pictures went bankrupt the day it came out. 
I remember oh. when this came out. Yeah. And and one other bit, then we'll get into our quick takes, but I, I did want to note that she was a member of the comedy troupe, The Groundlings. Chris, I know you looked into this a little oh, yeah. bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. She was there with, uh, well, with Paul Rubens, Pee Wee, Pee Wee Herman. Mm-hmm. Um, Phil Hartman was part of the group. Uh, oh. And then a couple people from this movie. From yeah. This, yep. Chastity, one, yeah. the, the mm-hmm. woman who played Chastity Pariah. And there was another one that I found uh, interesting when I dug in a little bit. And Mike, I don't know, maybe you, you'll appreciate this. You're a, a, a big It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia fan. Charlie's mom. Oh, oh yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah. Oh, wow. She was a part right, of that she crew. Played, she played Miss Yvonne on Pee Wee's Playhouse. And I forgot, yeah, right. she was part of the uh, part of the Groundlings, too. <laughs> part right? of the Groundlings. Yeah. yeah. I did forget about that, actually. Yeah, yeah apparently the character of Elvira sort of – came from a character she made from while she was in the groundlings, uh, which was like a Valley girl character. And then a lot of Elvira's persona and stuff like that. And then mixed in with her just actual fascination with horror got mixed <laughs> in and became the character that is Elvira. Not to mention boobs. Quick takes. Paul, what do you got for Elvira? Uh, this movie was directed by James Signorelli. <laughs> Great quick take. We didn't say it, so I just wanted to get it in there. <laughs> cool. Real good nice. quick take. Good use Thank of the you. time. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. yeah. Conveying information in a, in a brief way. That's what I this like is it. about. I like informative. Mike? Man, this movie's bad. Oh. You know, bad isn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I was surprised there I for a it. second, but now I'm now I see what you did there. I quoted the film. Chris Vira. Jay, just tell him my quick take is more than a great set of boobs. <laughs> Another quote. But an incredible pair of legs, too. Another quote, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There are a lot of fun quotes in this one. I mean, Paul, you quoted the Wikipedia page or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Jay, what's your quick take? My quick take is two simple words. <laughs> Any two, as long as they're simple. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that line, just to say, Chris started the quote, there's a little bit in the middle there, then Jay, you just ended that fucking Jay, speech she gives at, at like near the end of the second act or whatever. It's yeah. so fucking funny, man. It's so good. I think this episode is just going to be mainly quotes from the movie. Uh, it really could be. Like The thing is, I, I feel about Elvira is that you really have to be on board with, with her mm-hmm. persona, right? Like she's It's full of puns. It's very you know, like double entendre type stuff. And if you're down with that, you're probably going to have a good time with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to be but, in the mood for her yep. brand of humor if you're going to like this movie. So we open on a B movie, right? It is a woman confronting a monster. And I was wondering if anybody knew what that movie was. I think it's probably fake, right? Because it looks awesome. Oh, I thought that was a real movie. No. Was it? I would love to know what it is. I tried to find it, but I... I thought so. Because the other the other clip they showed later on was a real movie. I'm pretty sure I've seen clips of that thing, and it, not in an Elvira like uh, context. I'm pretty sure it's a, I'm pretty sure it's real, but that I would could be, be wrong. so good. It looks <clears throat> a lot like, and and the plot of what we jump into seems a lot like Zontar, the thing from Venus, um, <laughs> but it is not Zontar, the thing from Venus. So so then we see uh, that we are on a set with Elvira and her enormous ratings she's <laughs> wrapping up the show is that a rating uh, scale <laughs> oh, i got a rating scale for you don't you worry <laughs> um she is the gal who put the boob back in boob tube and mm-hmm. after her show they're gonna cut right to the news paul talk to me about longhorn the name's earl name's Earl, but the ladies back home call me longhorn well, uh, he's the new owner of the station, and he is very excited to meet Elvira. And Longhorn story short, he gets a little too <laughs> handsy with her, <laughs> and uh, Elvira's not too happy about it. So she basically, uh, from from him touching her uh, inappropriately... She kicks his ass on the air. She yep. dumps him like onto the news <laughs> desk and it explodes into a million pieces. And because of this, she loses her job as late night horror host, hostess. Well, she quits. She basically quits. Yeah. I'd so say. What's she got lined up? 
Well, she first off the bat, she needs to tie Longhorn's weenie into a granny knot. That's first on her <laughs> list of things to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she's hoping to get out to Las Vegas. She's got an offer to do a show in Las Vegas. She's going to she's going to be under all the lights on the strip and it's going to be fantastic because it's Elvira and she's going to kill it. Now, unfortunately, she talks to her manager, Manny, uh, Manny, Manny, the, the manager. manager. <laughs> and unfortunately, Elvira gets the news that the Flamingo won't do the show unless she puts up $50,000 to help produce it. Ugh, That's bullshit. So this really puts her in a bind for about five seconds until a telegram <laughs> arrives. Yeah. Well, before that, there's this really good gag in the scene while she's finding out from Manny that there's that her future plans are in trouble. She goes back to her dressing room, which is this sh- shitty, like almost a storage <laughs> closet. And yeah. and in it, she <laughs> she goes behind a screen to change and she changes and takes clothes off and whatever, what it throws clothing at Manny, whatever, whatever. And she comes out wearing the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. That's awesome. I didn't Pretty catch great. that. Because, <laughs> I mean, she wears the same thing almost the whole movie. It's kind of, I think That's it's kind true. of a bit. Someone else jokes about it later. But it's, I just thought it was great that <laughs> that happens. <laughs> you said it, Jay. Five seconds go by. Yes. And she hears that her great aunt, great aunt Talbot died. And she has to go to Falwell, Massachusetts for the inheritance and the will reading. Oh, I didn't even know I had a good aunt, much less a great one. And we cut right to it. Then we, yeah, we just go right to it. We go right to it. Not before she looks and talks to the camera, but, <laughs> I mean, intentionally. <laughs> like, yes, the right. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. It's okay when she breaks the fourth. It one. absolutely is. And I wish she would just look into my eyes more often. <laughs> <laughs> she wins it all. Um, she gets a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> and... <laughs> Well, yeah, but you got to talk about how it's presented. Okay, well, tell me. Of, tell me how well, the reading presented. of the will is basically just Elvira gets everything, and then it becomes like a game show set where everything, all of her inheritance is listed as like one of the prizes she's won. Let's show Elvira exactly what she's inherited. <laughs> yes, money is literally raining down on yeah. her. Oh, it's great. It's a yeah, the, ar- bit. the arbiter of the will tears his <laughs> clothing off and he's wearing like a bow tie and has a microphone to be a game show host. So, okay. It was all a dream. We got to say. Aww. Aww. That's a she shame. actually has to drive across the country for us to have a movie. So Makes sense. she's in her Elvira mobile. With the kick-ass license plate. Yeah. Like literally. Yeah. What, is, the kick-ass what does it license say? Plate. Kick-ass. Oh, yeah, right. right, right. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, she picks up a hitchhiker, and in 10 seconds, he's naked. Like, not even 10 seconds. Like, 10 feet of driving, and he's completely naked. <laughs> and that was one of the groundlings. He well. was trying to kill her, right? And she's like, don't forget your axe. And yeah, she kicks him. She th- well, I don't, we don't know if he kills him, but yeah, he gets <laughs> out. She, like, pulls over and kicks him out of the car, and he runs <laughs> right. off butt-ass naked. And she's got a hatchet in her hand <laughs> that I, we assume he had, and she throws it, and you hear him in the off-screen just, ah! <laughs> I think his plan was probably it's to kill great. her when he got in the car, but then he took a look at her and just couldn't help himself. Which happens a lot a in this lot. movie. Yeah. Yes. People cannot help themselves around Elvira. Fun production fact is uh, that there are actually no subtitles for this film because they were completely ineffective because no one could read them. Because they <laughs> no one just you couldn't look at. No one could look at the subtitles. <laughs> Eyes were distracted <laughs> elsewhere on screen. I was actually a little bit mad because I had the subtitles on per usual, but a lot of the times it was blocking what I wanted to be looking at. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Elvira would be upset about that. At last, my habit of not having subtitles on works out in my favor. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about the gas station that looks like it's straight out of the movie Parasite that we watched a few weeks ago. <laughs> chicken Pretty fried cool. steak. Oh, Thank you. Oh my God. Steak. I was hoping I wasn't the only person who heard chicken fried steak. <laughs> it's the country hit of the year. Oh, uh, I had it's to try amazing. to find it. That song is only on YouTube and it's only a clip from Elvira, oh, Mistress of the Dark. Wow. Like you can't find chicken fried steak. Well, I think you should put a little clip of it in right here, Jay. You're damn right. Chicken fried steak, oh, chicken fried steak. Taters and gravy and peas on plate. 
this. Bring me two orders. Don't make no mistake. There ain't nothing better than chicken fried steak. I believe it's by Gary Austin. <laughs> Yeah, that's really the only. Okay, we could say that the gas station attendant is also another groundling person oh, yeah, that she yeah. knew. We could say that the gas station blows up when he drops a cigarette. I really just wanted to talk about that scene for the song "Chicken Fried Steak." <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's fair. <laughs> that's it. Jay, much like much like, much like you uh, only wanted to talk about chicken fried steak for that last scene. I just want to get to the gazangas. <laughs> Let's get to the gazangas then, Mike. Well, Does the, do they happen in uh, when she gets to Massachusetts? Yeah, she gets to Mass- Falwell, Massachusetts, or whatever it's called, and uh-huh. uh, she gets there. It's a small town. Uh, she, uh, you know, people are it's beautiful, prudish, and Very. and judgmental, and mm-hmm. uh, and so they're they don't. She interacts with a few people, and they're all they all suck, and they're kind of judging her because she dresses sexily, and you know, embraces her sexuality. Uh, right. And there's some high school boys that do. <laughs> no, it's not even. Yeah, her car some... breaks down. Yeah, the car guy. She's she needs to get her car <laughs> fixed, and this car guy's fixing her car and yeah. talking to her about a story about <laughs> talking to her story about something uh, about his someone getting gingivitis from kissing a dog, and then <laughs> she, she well she leaves and no he said she leaves and as she leaves he goes nice tits but before that there's those high school boys that that say can you see those gazankas she's incredible man what I would do for just one peek at those gazankas <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot what it was like to be a kid in the eighties. Cause holy shit, man! <laughs> yeah, the high school kids love Ooh. them some Elvira. Speaking of all these uh, teenage boys, I got a little trivia fact for you, Jay. If you want it, whoa! Oh, yeah. Teenage yeah. boy trivia from Paul. My favorite segment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it says here that uh, then unknown Brad Pitt auditioned for one of the teenage boy roles, but Cassandra Peterson thought he was too cute and felt that Elvira would not be interested in Bob, who we'll meet in a second, if Brad Pitt was one of the teenagers trying to get her. Uh, on the casting notes of the audition, she wrote next to his name, Yum Yum. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been... Paul's boy facts. That's great. I bet Brad Pitt still regrets not getting that role. You know, you know what's funny yum, about yum. that, Paul, is it's very similar. It's very similar in my shrine to Brad Pitt that I've got in my bedroom. I also have the words yum yum written next to every picture of him. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. And also about town, Mike, you mentioned there's some other people who are prudish. The lead prude being yet another groundling. Named Chastity Pariah. Yes. Well, I never. Yeah, and you never will with them soup cans on your head. Listen, young lady, I don't know who you are or where you came from, but you most certainly don't fit in this town. Why, you don't even fit in that dress. (laughs) She is Queen Bee around here for keeping kids on the straight and narrow. I know her from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Edie McClurg is her name. Edie McClurg, yes. And Ferris Bueller, Bueller, apparently. Bueller. Bueller. And he wants, she's the secretary in Bueller. Yeah. She gets a hotel room, more interaction with people that don't really seem to want her there. Um, they tell her to go to the bowling alley. Yeah. Because otherwise this town isn't real big on fun. Well, importantly, right. it is their, I think, granddaughter of the proprietors of the hotel, the motel, uh, Robin. And she yeah. gets in trouble for wearing makeup and stuff like that. And Elvira kind of takes her aside and says, hey, don't. Don't take that much guff. It's, you know, I got in trouble for that, too, uh, and stuff like that. So Robin kind of looks at Elvira as, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a cool person to look up to and whatnot. Yeah. And and so that I think that plays in because she she sticks around and helps Elvira throughout the film when she gets a chance. Yeah, she she is a friend. So Elvira goes to the bowling alley, right? Titty bowl. And. <laughs> yeah. It is called Titty Bowl, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. Oh, God. Ugh. We immediately, two goons try to get up on her, and they are not subtle about it. How about a blowjob? <laughs> Were they in the groundlings? <laughs> no, one of them was in Greece. Yeah, I was going to say one of them was in Greece. <laughs> Did you Jeff look up Conway. everybody in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know that like like there's a lot of people that went on yeah. to do a lot of things or d- had previously done things. I mean, Paul, did you know the biker mama from Pee Wee's oh Big Adventure God. was in this movie? 
It was Cassandra <laughs> Peterson. <laughs> there are a lot of people in this movie. Like it's a it's a pretty big like production. Yeah. 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 Um, so and and as Mike alluded to when he was talking about Bob, this is the scene where we meet Bob because Elvira dumps beer on some crotches here to get these guys away from her and tries to stab one with a fake knife. And they're going to they're going to rough her up, it seems, until Bob or a little more than rough her up, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> oh our, uh, our big strapping man, Bob, Ooh. who runs the movie theater, comes over and punches him out. Well, not all of them. He he distracts them. He punches one. Elvira kicks the, the second guy's ass. Yeah, she does her part. For she sure. does her part. She doesn't come in and save her. He helps. And He's then a good they're assistant. like, and then they're uh, walking outside. Right? He sort of he sort of yeah. like shows her to her car or whatever. And mm-hmm. Elvira's really into this guy, which was like a big surprise to me because yeah. the, Bob's look is is like just yeah. big old meatball. He's like the most standard looking hunk of meat you've ever seen. I can't think of anyone who I'd rather squeeze into my agenda. Gee, that'd be swell. I don't I just figured that Elvira would be into more of like a like a rockabilly guy or something. No, she's into Bob. Oh, real into him. Yeah. Like, Right then and there, she wants Bob bad, and Bob is like the forty-year-old virgin, practically. Yeah, at like, some, he does not know what to do with her. No. At some point, Chris Arneson, friend of the show, walks in while I'm watching this movie, and he just goes, "Oh, the Brawny guy's in this, huh?" Because <laughs> he just looks like the guy from Brawny. Like he was—he's wearing like flannels. He's like a kind of right. a buff, big meathead, and he's got a combed-over hair, and he's wearing like flannels a lot of the time. He just looks like the Brawny guy. <laughs> yeah, he really does. Which I guess actually I kind of appreciate because throughout the entire movie, Elvi- the character of Elvira sort of like subverts your expectations of like what she's into and who she's into. So it's kind of a cool thing for her character that sh- that she's not quite what you expect her to be. Well put. She's very she's a very empowering character. She yes, is. Indeed. She is a good role model. It, the film really is about subverting expectations because the film is about a small town judging her and all that kind of stuff. And she's like, nah, I'm good. There are no swear words in this film. There is the word oh. ass on the license plate. And during a rap situation at the end of the film, I'm sure we'll get well into. Uh, they do say oh, yeah. bitch. Those are the only two swear words. Everything else is just sexual innuendo. There, There is a hint of an F-bomb at the movie theater. Oh, of course. Yeah, yes. yeah, there's we'll that. But that. Yeah, okay. So there's that too. But in general, it's a very clean film with only mm. sexuality being the thing. And I think that's a lot of it about that is judging sexuality and embracing one's sexuality and people – uh, putting judgment upon that and and subverting those expectations and it, it's it's pretty good for especially for 1988 or whatever it came out. True. Mike is getting at the at the subtext of the film. We could talk about the reading of the will, the real. <laughs> yeah, let's get into this <laughs> fucking thing. The oh There's no yeah. booze after 8 p.m. Cool. All right, she's bequeathed some stuff. What does she get bequeathed? <laughs> she gets a house. Cool. A poodle named Algonquin. Fuck yeah. And a cookbook. Hell Hell yes. (laughs) (laughs) This is also where we meet the villain villain. named Uncle Vincent. It's it's Elvira's, I guess it'd be his, her great uncle. I must apologize for my behavior in the office. It's just that your appearance was a bit of a shock to me. It's okay. My appearance was kind of a shock to everybody. Chris, you did some uh, some some looking up on Vincent, yeah. right? You looked. I was going to say that uh, Vincent was played by actor William Shepard, who is the only person in franchise history to be in both Star Trek and Doctor Who and Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. <laughs> wow! Wow! That's yeah. a only only yeah, actor wow. ever to be in all three. That is quite an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not clearly drunk enough to uh, to make this work. Jesus Christ, <laughs> Mike! What does uh, Vincent want? What what he wants something from Elvira because Vincent gets nothing. Great Aunt Morgana uh, literally writes in her will that he gets nothing and just like twists a knife. It's great. So so all he wants, all he wants is this the cookbook. Hey hey guys, I I just want to say real quick here in my notes to get a little more. And do the little more innuendo is my notes have cookbook spelled cockbock. 
What? That's definitely going in this edit. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to keep the innuendo going here. This has been a segment from the CDC. Chris's drunk comments. <laughs> I just want to say real quick here. I don't know how we've gone four seasons without having a t-shirt on store.bmoviemania.com that has Chris's head on it that says, I just want to say real quick. I just want to say real quick. <laughs> I think we should make that. I think Let's you're right, it. Paul. Chris, you okay with that? Hey, you be the hottest seller on our store. I just want to say that's a pretty great idea, Paul. Well, it's crazy that Chris... Crazy Chris Hudson already agreed to it because it's up there. It's actually up on the site. Nice. You can buy it now at store.bmoviemania.com. Boom. Magic. Thanks for making that, Paul. <laughs> God damn it. I'll do it. <laughs> Vincent tries to buy the book from Elvira after the will reading. He offers her 50 bucks. And <laughs> yeah. she says, sure, I'll do it for 50 bucks, just as Chastity Pariah walks by. And she is beside herself <laughs> because uh, she thinks this is a prostitution situation going on here. This is my favorite recurring bit. One might even say repetitive humor portion of the movie Ooh. for sure. <laughs> okay, Paul. And what? Just that, that she, she keeps being overheard? In she, she wrong keep, situations? Elvira what? keeps getting herself into situations where it looks to Chastity like she is a prostitute. <laughs> and she's not, yeah. but it's really funny the way that they set it up. Yes. Chastity runs into Vincent and they both more or less want to get rid of her. And then I have in my, my, my notes here a great quote that I'll put in now. Good, you know, because someone like that comes to town, the next thing you know, they're teaching sex education in the schools and they're passing out condoms to kindergartners. <laughs> <laughs> so Elvira is everything wrong with the world. So Elvira goes to the house that she is bequeathed. It's very Elvira. Yeah, which another way it subverts expectations as this house looks like something she would belong in. It's gothic, it's big, it's dark, and she hates it. What a dub. Like I said, the house needs a little something. Yeah, like a wrecking ball. She tries a hard sell on, on Uncle Vincent, trying to get him to buy this house, and he has to snap at her before she finally lets up. She's willing to bend over backwards, even bend over forwards. <laughs> <laughs> We got Gonk. Gonk hides the book from Vincent, right? Gonk is a smart little poodle. Yeah, but not at, not before she gives Gonk a haircut uh, and turns it into a dope ass punk rock poodle. Yeah, with a <laughs> pink mohawk. Yeah, it's and a belt. <laughs> it's wearing a yeah. belt. <laughs> yeah, and like asymmetrical haircut. It's fucking dope, man. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So, but yeah. So Vincent comes by for the cookbook. She agreed to sell it for fifty bucks. Gonk is not having that. Gonk takes the book and hides it so that she can't find it and Uncle Vincent's pretty upset. Yep. Ugh. Yep. Chris, I know you've got to have some thoughts on the next scene where the three high school boys... Oh, the high school pervs. <laughs> ...sneak up to Elvira's house. The high school perverts are there to take a Polaroid of Elvira as she changes. Ah, in a storm, too. In a storm, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is all creepy and you think something's going to go on, but... I like, how how would this work? Like, it, first, it, it's raining, like, really well, hard. Well, Polaroids were this picture technology in the 80s. <laughs> no, I yes. just, yeah. like, they're trying to take a picture of her, but they it's night, obviously, so they have to have the flash on. But the window's down. So that picture would just not yep. turn out at all, <laughs> Paul, even if it weren't Paul, pouring rain and getting all over the film processing. Paul, Paul, I just want to say, let me move in here and say, 30 years ago, picture technology was a lot different than it is now in the 21st century. And now you've got cell phones with cameras. 30 years ago, you had Polaroid cameras that could take pictures in all sorts of weather, rain or shine, night or day, you know, boobs or no. And that's what these kids are doing. They're using the technology available to them at the time to get a topless picture of Elvira. You know, I thought I thought Paul was the one with the photography hobby, but it turns <laughs> out that Hudson's pervert hobby uh, – <laughs> Overrides that. So instead yeah. of Paul's photo facts, we got Chris's pervert perv yeah. facts. Well, well, you see, well, you see, Mike. Thirty years ago, I was a teenage pervert. Cause I'm just a teenage pervert, baby. Yeah, I'm just a teenage pervert, baby. Watching Elvira's boobies, maybe with me. Ooh. <laughs> 
Yes. You might have been that boy climbing up the side <laughs> of the house. <laughs> Chicken fried steak. Oh. But <laughs> they do get the photo. They get their photo. Yeah, they do. They do. And, Somehow. Right. Elvira does catch them in the act, though, yeah. and knocks them off the second story. With a creepy house. mud mask. She does always <laughs> kind of get the best of anyone trying to take advantage of her or uh, uh, being uh, inappropriate with her, which, is, which yeah. is good. I think that's great. So the next morning... High school boys show up, and we have a montage. <laughs> uh huh. Mike, just grab a tool and start banging. Uh, <laughs> just grab a tool and start banging. <laughs> That's bad audio. So I don't quite understand. I guess it's just because Elvira shows up and she's something different that, that the sort of the teens latch onto her because. I get why the boys are hanging out with her, but, like, girls show up, too, to help out. And I'm like, why? Well, I think they sense her feminine power. I think yeah. they sense that she's a good role model that we've okay. been talking about. Yeah. And that well, she doesn't take any crap from yeah. people. That's why I wanted to bring up Robin when Robin shows up. Because Robin is, the, like, I think, the end for the, for the young women who do join up with her. Uh, because mm -hmm. she does, you know, she has that little talk with her and then shows, you know. Is, is a role model. So I think that's why they want to help. They want to, they see her as someone that empowers them. Okay. Right. And, and okay. So they help her all day. They, they fix up this house. And I think this is something else that sort of speaks to the subversion of expectation. Because yep. again, this house started like dark and gloomy and something that like, just if you look at Elvira, you'd think that she, she fits right in, but they redo this house into a multicolored horror and i mean it's just it's all kind of it looks like like rainbow ice cream like they just paint colors all over the place and she thinks it is absolutely fabulous it's fabulous you know you make me but she even when she says that she hesitates for a second like you think she's gonna say what have you done or something but no she yeah. actually loves it so okay so she's ready to sell and chris you're going to get this one <laughs> because this has one of, I believe, your favorite characters, oh, yes. one of your favorite character actors in yes. it coming up here. You want to talk about him? Kurt Fuller. Yeah. The the, the our, original jockass. Our, yeah, jockass. the original jockass. <laughs> jockass! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we last talked about Kurt Fuller uh, uh, you, in our you, No Holds you, Barred episode. You, you jockass! <laughs> jockass! <laughs> I've been waiting a week to say that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's just a, a very small but very memorable part as the smarmy real estate guy trying to uh, help Elvira sell her house. And he just goes crazy you know this town is all about repression and kurt fuller's character is possibly the most repressed of any repressed person in the, in town slowly mm. unveil everything from the balcony to the basement one area at a time then when he's so enthralled he's ready to burst you clinch the deal ah, ow! and he just when he is just Looking at Elvira's two good reasons to sell her house, he cannot <laughs> contain himself. And uh, yeah, so this whole you know minute and a half long scene is full of innuendo and um, ends up until with, he just straight up until he just straight up gropes her and she throws him out of the house. Right, Gonk chases him, jackass. I just, I just had to say it, jackass. He threatens her and says, "No one will come to see her house without him." And he's right. She puts the house up for sale and nobody comes to the open house. He thinks Elvira is a jockass. Jockass. <laughs> Manny, the manager, <laughs> is bugging her about this $50,000. Elvira's going around town trying to get a job, which is hilarious because she needs $50,000 like immediately. And no one will hire her. Nobody wants to talk to her or have anything to do with her. Well, they do, but they can't. They, they, they're kind of forbidden to. Right. There are people who do like her, but they are, there's too much pressure from Chastity Pariah and the, the town morality board for them to do anything about it. Yeah. They like out, they, they basically pass a rule or whatever that says like, you can't, you can't hang out with her. Right. Like the yep. kid, like the principal yeah. confiscates the naked photo of her and 
He finds says, it in the boys' bathroom. Right, right. Which I get. Because that's where we used to leave Playboy pictures when I was in school. You'd you'd hide like some pic like some Playboy cuttings you got from your older brother or whatever in like the bathroom. And if you were cool, you know where to go look. Just check them out. Yeah, that's another thing for our younger viewers. Back before the internet, you had to get creative when it came to figuring out a you know a way to get your hands on some porno. Well, when I was a kid 30 years ago, it was called woods porn, and people would leave it under a rotten log. <laughs> you know, I've... What? Um, <laughs> you know, I, wood, Chris, if you'd like porn. to talk more about that, you actually... Go, go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Well, you see, there was like a trail where I grew up, and it was in the middle of the woods, and underneath this rotten log, there were like three or four nudie magazines that if you were one of the cool kids... Um, you could go, you know, take a look at these rotted, stuck together, wet pages. Uh, I used to think it was, I used to think it was the weather that had caused these pages to stick mm. together. And now I'm, oh, I am re boy. rethinking my entire life up until this point. Uh, I think well, I just had a breakthrough, guys. I'm so sorry about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go cry in the corner for a moment. You guys carry on. I'll be back as soon as I recover. <laughs> well, Chris. I don't know how you did it, but that's actually a perfect segue into our Night Beast Industries commercial for this episode. So let's roll that. Night Beast Industries news product will help keep your fantasies alive. Gentlemen, think back to yesteryear. When you were curious about female anatomy, what did you do? Like thousands of other young men, you snuck out to the woods and looked at pornography magazines hidden under old logs. And what happened over time? The magazines got so wet you couldn't whack. Well, wanksters, once again, Night Beast Industries meets yesterday's problems with tomorrow's solutions. Proudly introducing Spank Safe. Simply place your favorite vintage nudie mag into the Space Age aluminum alloy Spank Safe case and lock it with your choice of thumbprint or retinal security features. Place it under the log and no matter what the elements conjure up, Spank Safe will keep your porno dry. No backwoods masturbatoriums complete without it. And ladies, if you want to head into the forest to itch the ditch, Spank Safe has you covered too. Check out our line of bedazzled cases sure to impress any bosom buddies you bring along. If you open your spank safe and the pages are still wet, well, <laughs> that's not mother nature. Spank safe from Night Beast Industries. We service you so you can service yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paul. We had some goons breaking in. Jeff Conway from Greece. The other guy... <laughs> <laughs> um, they're breaking into her house looking for this book, right? We get a little hint of magic here. Can we, can, can you just tell me about that? Tell me about the magic, Paul. Was, was Jeff Conway also the guy who, uh, was on like the, the rehab house on VH1? Yeah. Oh, yes. He <laughs> what the died. What are you talking about? What? He was an absolute yes. mess in his later life. Yes, he life. died, Paul. He died. He died in like 2016, I believe. All right. Um, but yeah, Jeff Conway and the other goon break into Elvira's house to find this book and we get a little bit of magic that I don't remember what happens. Oh, <laughs> I teed it up and you, you, uh, whiffed. let's see. Okay. They're looking the, for the it's, book. It's Algonquin. Mm. Algonquin. Think about the dog. The Algonquin. Dog. Guys, we all, we all look like a bunch of boobs right here. We got Jay, just say it. Just say what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Algonquin uh, transforms on the stairway, and we see him. He has a shadow of a large Rottweiler dog and a very loud bark, and oh, scares the guys that. away because they think there's a large dog when he's oh, really. See, cool. I thought that was just the shadows playing tricks. Oh, I didn't catch no, the magic, magic bit. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's for sure that magic. makes so much more sense though. That was a um, tough setup. And check. someone referenced earlier Elvira running into Bob while he's changing the marquee on the movie theater. Well, that comes next. Paul, yeah. Can can you talk about that one, Paul? Yeah, I can. I can definitely do that one because this is another reoccurring bit with uh, Elvira and uh, Chastity Pariah, where they're talking about <laughs> Bob's business. Such a good he runs name. the movie house. <laughs> And he's trying to change the marquee, and El Elvira says, "Oh, you got 
one too many E's on matinee. And he's like, no, it's spelled right. And she's like, I think I would know. So she goes up there for some reason to take an E off, like gets up a ladder <laughs> and loses her balance a little bit and and stumbles and like catches herself by like grabbing grabbing onto the marquee and the E, <laughs> it basically... <laughs> What is it? It says like how to fuck is basically what chastity it says. How sees. to fuck? <laughs> yeah, so chastity passes out. She she can't take the sight of it. Um, Elvira plants one on Bob when he catches her. Oh. Yeah. This is also the the setup where um, you know Elvira is trying to help his business and she gets a good idea to well we, we don't see it pay off immediately but she gets an idea to to try to help bob's business stay afloat chris talk about vincent uh <clears throat> well i i'd love to but maybe you can help me decipher my notes here i can tell you here's i here's, i know exactly what they say chris your notes say the bad guy has a secret passage holy shit the bad guy has a secret passage holy fucking shit the there's an elevator in the bad guy's secret passage this is fucking great oh my god the secret passage of the <laughs> elevator i can't wait to see where this you were, goes you were you were very close mike um uh, all it said is uncle Vinny has a secret passage in his book's help and his books help? Books help. I don't know what my fingers were thinking when I typed this shit out, but wow. what shelf, the book fuck shelf. is a book shelf? Book shelf. Oh, book well, shelf. Yeah, simple. Yeah. He goes down to his study down there, his secret study, and it's all smoky. And I was, I found myself wondering why they would. Yeah, I was going to say, he has so much, so much, so much smoke piped into his secret well, lair. Why would you <laughs> pipe around smoke? Well, <laughs> inside Joe. So much smoke. <laughs> so yeah he taunts morgana from beyond the grave he's gonna get the book he's gonna be master of the dark um they will let him rule over the night right right book right, of right. sights um meanwhile elvira wants to get everybody to to do what paul you you were talking a little bit about the idea that she had i think this is where that she really talks about it right when she's in the diner um she's gonna do a midnight movie screening where she is like the host it's basically the same thing as her tv show um but it's going to be bad movies it's going to be really bad movies yeah. and um you know she kind of assumes that all a really like you know like bad um she assumes that the teens the youths if you will are going to be into this but because of the ban, uh, they don't want to talk to her. They don't, you know, they don't want to come to the show. So she breaks down crying, upset that, <laughs> that this idea of hers is not going to work. But then all the teens eventually say, no, you know what? We got to help our girl out here. We will be at your show. And Robin leads the charge there. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Robin does lead the charge. And somebody we haven't mentioned yet, uh, Patty, who mm. runs the oh, bowling yeah, yeah. alley. And is kind of Elvira's main nemesis in a way. One of, one of her main nemesis. I guess she, Elvira has a lot of them. She overhears this plan. And you can tell by the look on her face that she intends to disrupt it. Well, she's really in love with Bob. She does. She's got the biggest tits in town. And then Elvira shows up and she's threatened right. by it. And very true. Very true. And, and the biggest Literally. crush on Bob in town. Oh, yes. Bob is her man. Yeah. Or want, she wants Bob to be her so man. So Elvira shows her up in two ways. Well, you mm -hmm. could say you know that it's I mean. a battle over Bob and a battle over boobs. A boob Bob battle, my favorite. Ooh. So kids from all <laughs> over town are sneaking out of the house. Patty sneaks into the theater. Elvira plans to drop a bucket of gold glitter on herself at the climax of the show. Yeah, she tells the teens or someone that she's going to do that. Yeah, she says she's going to do a flash dance and then does the flash dance and it's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> well, what movie are they watching at the theater? They're watching Killer Tomatoes. Attack yep. of the Killer Tomatoes. Robin is all dolled up and one of the boys puts his arm around her. Mike, remember when we watched uh, Ret uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? Yeah, it didn't hold up as much as I remember. <laughs> no, it was terrible. Sorry, Jay. It comes time for Elvira to do her flash dance. She's a maniac, maniac. But Patty strikes. Instead of gold glitter, 
It is a bucket of tar. Ah. Uh, and then she feathers her. Yes. Dumps feathers all over her. Elvira has to go home and take a bath in gasoline. <laughs> is that Does that work? I've never had to detar myself. Yeah, you, you use something like gasoline or like turpentine or something like that to get something like that off. It's... I mean, you wouldn't take a bath in gasoline, but <laughs> she does. you would hey. use gasoline to get something like that off your hands, perhaps. Hey, what's that perfume you're wearing? <laughs> what's that perfume you're wearing? <laughs> Super unleaded. <laughs> Don't smoke. It's a great line. <laughs> so Bob's back, right? That she, she, so Bob comes over after she takes her bath and she cooks him dinner out of the cookbook, which is very sweet of her. Well, she didn't like mean to cook for him. She was like about to jump on him. Oh, when, she wants she, Bob yeah, in a like, bad way. Bad. Well, and yeah. Bob, Bob was ready to get in the car and go to the truck stop to eat at like two. At, what what time is it? It's got to be, like be two in the, in the morning. morning at least. Okay, this is what I wanted to talk about. The midnight show, I assume, starts at midnight. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And with. Elvira's opening and her flash dance bit at the end. We'll say that it probably the show ran probably close to two hours. And then mm -hmm. she's got to go back and take a gasoline bath to get all the tar off of her. I assume that's going to take half hour, 45 minutes while downstairs, the teens and, and Bob are, are hanging out waiting for her to finish. She comes downstairs. They like watch a movie or something afterwards and then the t the teens leave and bob and elvira watch tv until it goes off the air it go it cuts to static which would freak mike out i'm glad he wasn't there for that i so happy i wasn't then he says let's go to the truck stop and she goes no let me cook you dinner so it's got to be like <laughs> 6 37 in the morning when she's trying to cook oh, dinner Paul. <laughs> Paul, Paul, does your timeline change knowing, I just looked this up, that the runtime for Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is one hour, 27 minutes. Does oh. that change your timeline okay. at all? No, I don't think so. Never mind. No, it all makes sense now. <laughs> 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 it's definitely very late. And she goes into the kitchen to cook and tries one of her Aunt Morgana's recipes. What the fuck is this scene? <laughs> it's it looks like someone took is. a dump into a pot and covered it in hamburger helper. Uh, no, the hamburger helper is later, Jay. That's that's the love potion later at the picnic. No, but hold on. We got to talk about this for a second. She she opens up the cookbook and there's all these ingredients in it that she doesn't like. It's words that like we don't even know. It's in a f like foreign language or you know it's it's witchcraft. A draka kozaro kozaro. Oh, casserole. Or a witch language. All of the ingredients are in the cabinet, and and the first ingredient <laughs> is worms. And she's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, yep. And all right, just cool. rolls uh, all right, with we'll put it. Worms in. She takes a bag of chips and crushes it and puts it on top and then sprays cheese whiz on top of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like Perfect. cheese whiz and Doritos. On top of worms and just like moldy bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so Bob is sitting at the table. She brings it out, opens the lid, <laughs> and a giant monster pops out. I hope you're hungry, because here's dinner. <laughs> a fucking like lizard creature, which is an amazing. Puppet practical effect. It's fucking great. Yeah, the creature looks <laughs> Bob awesome. Bob is like jabbing it with the fork. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. And they have to struggle with it and they, they try to take it in the pot and they end up cramming it down the garbage disposal. It's fantastic. Um, Gonk grabs the book again and I think next we go up to the attic, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Mike, wait, what's what's going on up there? Uh, it's just, they're trying to find out what's going on up there. They find a, a, a chest with a letter to Elvira in it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. and then, uh, there's a letter in there and the, we, we get to see baby Elvira at Pickens <laughs> oh Orphanage. <laughs> yeah. It's this little baby that's painted up to look just like Elvira. Like all of yeah, the makeup I, It's on, pretty great. The, the baby's got makeup like Elvira. It's pretty fucking good. 
And then, so they cut back from a flashback of baby Elvira at Pick and Save Orphanage. And, and she's like, oh, wait, I just need orphanage. to have a spell and something like that. So she finds one called Selba Ricky Mula Sheen. And she's like, oh, this will get me money for my Las Vegas show. So she reads the spell and then the, the whole house shakes and shakes and shakes. And then the lights turn out. And then Bob gets a fucking big ass boner. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is it? Is it? Does she summon a trouser snake? It's not In a, a way. teeny wanger, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she summons a like a boa constrictor that, <laughs> that bursts she thinks into is flames. His fucking erection. <laughs> right, right. She's all into it, and then she realizes it's a snake, and. and it- it yeah. bursts into flames. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she gets scared and says, Bob, hold me. And finally, from what it appears, Bob does more than hold her. He bones down. Yep. <laughs> Cut to a picnic. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I love this picnic. It's a morality this, club picnic. Oh. This is amazing. Is that because you really like uh, Tic Tac Pie, Jay? <laughs> I love Tic Tac Pie. <laughs> and I love Revenge. Elvira puts the pot out. She sneaks up, puts the pot out with the with all the potluck things. And man, people taste it. Chastity thinks it's good. Yeah, she does. Mm-hmm. Who wants this? This is so good. I'll do it. Paul, go ahead. Elvira, I think from her cookbook that she's sort of, uh, you know, learning from right now, uh, whipped up something that turns out to make everybody at the picnic very horny <laughs> and they go hog why all these old people in town in this very oh. very you know puritanical town go ape shit on each other there's <laughs> All sorts of nasty, nasty sex going on. You get, you get, a, you get a sausage in a taco shell. Yes, that's <laughs> that's jockass and uh, jock Patty ass got the sausage and he gives it. He to, picks up. He's Patty's like waggling soccer. around this bratwurst, <laughs> and and she picks up a taco shell. <laughs> so and then they, <laughs> she puts the hot dog in the taco shell and eats it. <laughs> so, if, what, so chastity at one point goes oh my i am a horn dog <laughs> it's so good it's everyone all the old people are tearing off their clothes and getting ready to fuck but one thing stands out in this guys one thing and i know we all saw it i know we all Ugh. got started drooling when we saw this i know we did and that one thing was Introducing Slice, the soft drinks with 10% fruit juices, like new Apple Slice. Yes! Apple Slice, baby! Apple oh, Slice happened! God. We got a product Damn, placement apple for Apple Slice. <laughs> yeah, Chastity nice. is drinking an Apple Slice. I didn't know that that was a thing. I forgot it was a thing. I don't know if I ever had it, but I remember loving all those fucking slice flavors, man. That shit was good. <laughs> um, later on, they're all talking at the morality club meeting and they're all blaming everybody and and see, trying to see whose fault it is. And then Vincent shows up and says, look, we all know it's Elvira's fault and we can arrest this witch. Yep. And it pretty it moves pretty fast from here. We yeah. do. It is maybe important to mention that at the end of the picnic, Elvira does punch the tits off of Patty. Oh, That's yeah. true. We, we, yes. That's right. She literally. literally punches Patty in the face and knocks her out of her shirt and bra and fake breast assesses. Mm-hmm. Well, padding. not fake breast. Which is padding. important. She's a really padded bra, right? Like she's, she's not nearly yeah. as busty yeah, yeah, as yeah. we've been led to believe. Which is something she has been touting around. This is not right. a judgment upon it. It's something she has been lording over everyone else, which is why she's also probably jealous of Avira for her natural breasts or mm-hmm. uh, surgically natural breasts. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Wait, so anyway, that's we're, okay. We're no, you're single? right. You're right. So, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, maybe I got I got to take a swig of uh, some apple slice. Oh, that's oh, don't that think like, that's that, what that, that looks like. Oh. Apple malort. Apple malort. Oh, that was malort. Oh. <laughs> Shit. 
It's that feeling you get when you expect apple <laughs> slice and you get Malort. Delicious. Anyway, so Vincent uh, gets the book. <laughs> <laughs> yes Elvira's in jail they're gonna burn Elvira at the stake they're building a stake and they're building one for for Gonk a smaller little pyre it's a for shame him. yeah Jay yes. I get, Jay Elvira is entitled to one phone call in a strip search though <laughs> that's true yeah I do not believe she gets it um Gonk transforms into a punk rock mouse yes <laughs> and it's so good um yes and the Vincent does end up with the book. He gets it from the house. Uh, Bob is tied up in the house because yeah. the goons knock him out to get the book. And the teens are trying to break into the jail cell, but they break into the wrong jail right. cell and just get trapped <laughs> there. They're in prison easily. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good bit. That, that was, was a really very good bit. Uh, there's a creepy priest who once again proves that no one can not grope Elvira in this town. Yeah. Gonk shows up and frees Bob. I think I think he knows Gonk is supposed to be the familiar. Oh, that's right. It was part of the story, right? Gonk was in like the whole orphanage scene. Bob's a little that's smarter right. than he lets on. They they put Mel Elvira on the stake, and Patty, she's still a little bit butt hurt over this whole thing. Yep. A little bit boob hurt. A little bit boob hurt. Patty walks up and goes, "Stop! This isn't right." And stops the uh, the preacher, I think it is, or the sheriff from like mm-hmm. lighting the the stakes on fire. And then she just actually has this like cooking directions for the witch. Like she's like, no, no, you got to do it this way. <laughs> yes, and we get a little flashback where Elvira is told she's had the power the entire time, and sh- it's her ring. So she uses it to kick on a storm, which kills the flame and sends the townspeople scurrying away. Mm-hmm. And and Bob saves her and she plants one on him those town pe- those townspeople gave up real quick like they went scattering oh yeah immediately. they scattered immediately yeah mm-hmm. chris once again they're piping around smoke because <laughs> vincent it walks out of his like shop thing and there's just smoke everywhere now <coughs> are they piping well, it around in your house too well they are piping smoke around <laughs> in my house and smoke well, okay. I mean, not to beat a dead horse, but 30 years ago, smoke was the way you told something was, you told viewers that something was evil or bad. You know, you got uh-huh. smoke coming in and this is where Vincent comes in. He's got smoke all around him and he's got claws, looks like a demon, kind of right, talks all right. evil. You know, they got the, the eclipse going on. He's got the book. So he's got all the power now. He's, you know, he's a demon. So Basically, it was the uh, smoke that told the townspeople that not the satanic robe or like the right yeah yeah okay. forget okay. all that okay. forget the the demonic robe demon yeah. thing it's the smoke that scattered the townspeople this this is what yes. i don't understand and here so it, it's revealed that he's like this demonic force vincent is right but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he's like and he's like 300 years <clears throat> old and apparently um elvira's mom was 300 years old so are we to i hope i look that good when i'm their age yeah but are we supposed to <laughs> take from this that Elvira is also one of these? Is she very old? Is she a demon as well? Like, what's going on? I think she's just a witch and could conceivably live to be that old. Yeah. Also, she doesn't have any smoke piped in around her, so she's a <laughs> she's not a demon. <laughs> True. Got it. True. Um, and <laughs> so Vincent starts making short work of people. He turns the principal of the school chastity and jockass into pigs <laughs> swine and chokes bob and throws algonquin in a dumpster like in a very short amount of time so it pretty much just comes down to vincent and elvira pretty I quick i love this part <laughs> what part do you love chris well like she's got the power to like stop his spells or whatever she like thrusts out her hand with the ring that we talked about mm-hmm. and it just flies off her hand right onto vincent's <laughs> so now he's <laughs> right. got the book and the ring immediately he has all the power and he confesses to killing elvira's mom hot rambo comes out she comes (laughs) well they do show the 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 military surplus store earlier in the movie she tries to get a job there yeah they did show it's Chekhov's military surplus store they showed it in act one and now (laughs) they use it elvira comes out of there with uh what do you want me to call it chris it's a red eye missile jay a A red red eye eye missile. missile yes Listen, when I was in Army, 
Uh -huh. I was I did air defense stuff with Stinger missiles. The Red Eye was the predecessor of the Stinger missile, and that's what she's got. Right. Yeah. So what did she do with it, Mike? It's not a, okay. not a bazooka. It's no, a it's definitely not a bazooka. It's Although under, it's got a pretty, under the arm. You know, it's not a bazooka because bazookas go on the shoulder. So when you when you hold a bazooka, it's it. rested on your shoulder, and then it Ugh. shoots out the bazooka bomb, it. and it goes right into the target. But if it's One, not on top of the arm, it's not a bazooka it's bomb. Arm, it's not a bazooka. Two red eyes go on your shoulder too, Mike. Ugh. But I do, I do appreciate the aftermarket scope. You know, though. Hudson has only dealt with FGM one four eight javelin fucking rockets. We get it, Hudson. No. All right, maybe you know what those are, and maybe you know those go above the shoulder. But so do bazookas, and bazookas oh, never folks, go under the arm. Okay, in the store. If you want to go check those out, we'd love a rating. I really set this bit it's, up. It's again I? my face just saying <laughs> it's not a fault. bazooka. <laughs> so the virus is running through a graveyard. It is a bazooka. And Paul, let's talk about the graveyard. Can we? Can we please talk about the graveyard? Sure. <laughs> okay. What is? What is? What happens? Just talk about it. Go. Um. <laughs> okay. So Elvira trips and throws a pump at Vincent's head, and he lashes out with Palpatine style force lightning. And Elvira <laughs> runs and has to break open the cemetery gate with her chesticles. Oh, it's a very famous she can't gif. Fit through. She she runs home, right? And they get Jeff Conway back to the goes. House. Yeah, get, Jeff Conway gets a face full of leeches. Yep. And I think that's the last we see of him. Yeah, and we never see the other thug. Right. Um Vincent busts through the wall with his hand, right? And an axe mm -hmm. falls, cutting it off. Yep. He breaks through like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> and she gets the ring back. And yeah. wait, now the house is on fire at this point, right? Well, because he's, he's vomiting dragon fire. Firing. Yeah, he's <laughs> dragon firing the, ho the whole house. And uh, wasn't it the loose? We didn't talk a lot about the loose floorboard, did we? We didn't mention <laughs> it at all. At all. Yeah, there's a loose floor, uh, floorboard the, gag. Loose Check off loose, Check floorboard. loose floorboard. Yeah, he gets, and, uh, Vincent gets it in the nuts by a loose floorboard. <laughs> yes. And then she zaps him with the ring and then he's gone. Movie he's gone. Ends. That's it. That's I, I will it. admit that, that, that his death didn't feel super, like, climactic. No. Nah. Well, that's because it's not the climax, Jay. The climax is in Vegas. Well, yeah, my, 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 my was. Mine was. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. You want to just get to Vegas? You want to just get there? Yeah, she gets all the money and she like dreams again about Vegas and then Hudson Vegas. It happens. Like the yeah, the whole show, town right? is now the but the whole town is loves her now. And they yeah, say you true. can come back anytime. Now she goes to her Vegas show. <clears throat> well, she gets now that Vincent's dead, she she's the sole relative, so she gets all of Vincent's money. We did yeah, say which that. Which is significant. Oh, did we, we did oh, say I that. Missed. I totally missed that. Uh, maybe I'm finally drunk enough. <laughs> Finally. Well, maybe you're drunk enough start, to describe the, the show over? Flamingo Hotel Mistress of the Dark show. Yes. With lots of muscular dancing demons and tiny <laughs> cod pieces. Yes. And evidently she had the flu during this scene. Oh, no. I did read. Really? She had oh, she terrible flu. It still. Yeah. And uh, she knew how to tassel twirl um, <laughs> since she was like 14 years old. <laughs> I was it's, pretty impressed by that. That, the, was, yeah. that was not the, a stunt double. No, no. The, the breakdown of this scene is it shows up at Vegas. Obviously, fucking Shecky Green's opening up for her. We all obviously yeah. know who that is and everything's fine. We don't have to course, explain yeah. it to any the to Gen Z or anything. <laughs> um, and and so so it starts out like a classic like she's a showgirl, but dark and creepy. And there's muscular devils and they're dancing around the suspenders and devil horns. And it's very sexy and, and beautiful. Um and then it breaks into a rap breakdown where she does a rap, uh, a rap, a rap. And then she tassel twirls her boobs in, in talented ways, like not just like spinning the boobs one way. She like does one at a time. The other one stays stationary, mixes it up. It's like 90. It's like a minute and a half, man, of like just uncut <laughs> fucking titty twirling. And it is fantastic. She's very talented. Shecky it is Green hard to move is an American like comedian known for his nightclub performances <laughs> in Las Vegas, where he became a headliner in the 1950s. Still alive. <laughs> the minute and a half long tassel twirling scene is followed by credits. It just ends <laughs> after that. <laughs> yep. Rating and time. Rating time. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like we all enjoyed this. Sure. 
I want to rate this one to 100 horny potlucks. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Paul. Wow. 76 horny potlucks. <laughs> okay. No discussion. <laughs> I liked it. It was fun. It's not perfect by any means. There are some, you know, pacing issues. It didn't it didn't hold my attention the entire time, but 76% of the time it was very very fun. Awesome. Mike. Um I I think it yeah, it it's fun. Paul's right. There's a couple of slow times where I found myself uh veering away, but in general the jokes are great. Uh, I think it's it's uh, a fairly it doesn't really get gross. Anytime someone's gross towards Elvira, she kind of comes out on top, which is great. Uh, and it's fucking fun, man. Um, I think it could win people over who aren't don't think they're into her shtick. I think they could maybe watch it and be like, oh, those are nice tits, like genuinely very <laughs> nice tits. Um, but also also she's not a pushover and she kind of the, the uh, kind of a self uh, an underlying message is like fucking creepy dudes fucking suck and they they fucking blow hard so you know there's that uh i i you know hey uh sorry Jim, i'm gonna mix it up a little bit uh i'm gonna give it 88 mm -hmm. slice apple sodas wow <laughs> <laughs> very nice got it got it uh chris vira Hacker of the dark. <laughs> what do you give this? This is pretty good. I was going to do a little 88 joke myself there for Mike. Um, but I just wanted to say that it's a fun movie. It does drag in a few spots here and there. Um, so the score I, I'm going to give it uh, kind of relates to, so 30 years ago, oh kids, uh, to God. entertain themselves, would type into a calculator 58008. And you turn it upside <sighs> down and it says boobs, right? And I bring that up mainly because I wanted to make one last boob reference before I rate this 77 <laughs> horny potlucks. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jay? I, I like the character of Elvira. I think she's funny. I think she's a, a powerful and positive character. Uh, I'm definitely interested in seeing Elvira's Haunted Hills, which was another one. Oh, that me she too. Did. Yeah, yeah. Would definitely like to see that. I can't find it streaming anywhere, but I'd like to see it. Um, this is just a great B movie. Uh, so I think, you know, if we're rating this one to 100, I'm going to give it a B. I'm going to give the film a B, but I'm going to give it the best B possible because I think that's, that feels right. So I'm going to give it 89.9 .9 horny potlucks. Wow. Nice. Very hey, nice. Chris, look, you're right. On well, modern Paul's, phones. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> When you type it in, it doesn't look like boobs anymore. <laughs> so, so the kids, the kids Man, don't know. Kids, the kids are getting robbed. Here. B-Movie Mania. <laughs> On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Chris, I think we're passing it over to you. What do you got for us? All right. Well, you know, I thought long and hard about my second pick for season four, and Paul has gotten a bit of a reputation for picking movies with dead cats. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I don't have that reputation. <laughs> Oh, you do. <laughs> and I Paul's really the dead cat maniac. <laughs> I really wanted to pick something with a living cat, but Paul says he doesn't have Disney Plus, so that that girl's that pick out. I thought long and hard about this, and we've never done a movie from our B movie marathon until now. Oh, mm. the movie that we all know and love with the most badass theme song of all time. Green slime! Wow. Oh, sweet. Oh, my oh gosh. shit. That's a surprise. Is that I'm illegal? excited because I was trashed when we watched that on the marathon. <laughs> dude, dude, I have the poster hanging on my wall right now. I just watched it a couple weeks ago. There's a gorgeous HD version yeah. on YouTube. All yep, right, sweet. That's the it's one we're going to watch. Yeah, it looks so, really good. Yeah, and it was, I, yeah. That's a great pick. So that that movie is near and dear to my heart. One of the two horror movies that I like, cult movies I grew up with, The Blob oh. and The Green Slime. Perfect. So, gotta we're gonna do that next time on B Movie Mania. Well, Chris, I'm officially Beautiful. telling you that if you want for your third pick to pick a Disney Plus movie, I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told Paul that if you did that, Chris. He could use my webcam to watch the movie, but he could only look at my face watching the movie. <laughs> so it's going to okay be a real this. interesting episode for Paul. That would be pretty fun. Maybe next time. <laughs> 
Well, if you guys want to check out that shirt we advertised earlier, that was something about something that Chris says that Paul's making to have put up here. <laughs> uh, or the, our, our Slade Craven shirt that just went up that has been flying off the, sh- the shelves. It's almost like, sold out. It It is. Thankfully, mm-hmm. our supplier has been like, fine, I'll keep doing it, which is great. <laughs> But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, check it out. We have we have shirts at store.bmoviemania.com. Uh, you can follow us on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We've even got, uh, what else we got? Oh, we're on iTunes, and that's apparently the one that matters. So if any of you <laughs> happen to have the, the, the iTunes. Yeah, I know. ITunes. Chances are you still might be quarantined. I hope not. I hope we're all done with this, but behind we the curtains. We might be dead the by quarantine. the time this comes out. Yeah, so if you're still alive... I gotta get this done. Please go to scheduled. iTunes and rate the show. You know what? Normally we say you don't have to write anything, just click the stars, but I know you're not fucking doing anything if you're still quarantined, so write something. It could it could call me a jackass. I don't care. Just do it. Call us Please. all jackasses. It's fine. Write help messages. Anything. Anything. You could call me a jockass. <laughs> oh. You, 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 you Jockass! Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Chicken fried steak, oh, chicken fried steak. Ain't nothing nothing better better than chicken chicken fried steak. steak. You need to, like, fuck off. Go on, fucker.